Part 1, Propositions 26 to 30 of The Ethics by Spinoza. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by I. M. Clifford. The Ethics by Benedict A. Spinoza. Translated by R. H. M. Elwes. Part 1. Propositions 26 to 30. Proposition 26. A thing which is conditioned to act in a particular manner has necessarily been thus conditioned by God, and that which has not been conditioned by God cannot condition itself to act. Proof. That by which things are said to be conditioned to act in a particular manner is necessarily something positive. This is obvious. Therefore, both of its essence and of its existence, God, by the necessity of his nature, is the efficient cause. Proposition 25 and 16. This is our first point. Our second point is plainly to be inferred therefrom. For if a thing which has not been conditioned by God could condition itself, the first part of our proof would be false. And this, as we have shown, is absurd. Proposition 27. A thing which has been conditioned by God to act in a particular way cannot render itself unconditioned. Proof. This proposition is evident from the third axiom. Proposition 28. Every individual thing or everything which is finite and has a conditioned existence cannot exist or be conditioned to act unless it be conditioned for existence and action by a cause other than itself, which also is finite and has a conditioned existence. And likewise, this cause cannot in its turn exist or be conditioned to act unless it be conditioned for existence and action by another cause, which also is finite and has a conditioned existence, and so on to infinity. Proof. Whatsoever is conditioned to exist and act has been thus conditioned by God, by Proposition 26 and Proposition 24 Corollary. But that which is finite and has a conditioned existence cannot be produced by the absolute nature of any attribute of God, for whatsoever follows from the absolute nature of any attribute of God is infinite and eternal, by Proposition 21. It must, therefore, follow from some attribute of God, insofar as the said attribute is considered as in some way modified. For substance and modes make up the sum total of existence, by Axiom 1 and Definitions 3 and 5, while modes are merely modifications of the attributes of God. But from God, or from any of His attributes, insofar as the latter is modified by a modification infinite and eternal, a conditioned thing cannot follow. Wherefore, it must follow from or be conditioned for existence and action by God or one of his attributes, insofar as the latter are modified by some modification which is finite and has a conditioned existence. This is our first point. Again, this cause or this modification, for the reason by which we establish the first part of this proof, must in its turn be conditioned by another cause, which also is finite and has a conditioned existence. And again, this last by another, for the same reason, and so on, for the same reason, to infinity. Quad erit demonstrando. Note, as certain things must be produced immediately by God, namely those things which necessarily follow from his absolute nature, through the means of these primary attributes, which nevertheless can neither exist nor be conceived without God, it follows, 1 that God is absolutely the proximate cause of those things immediately produced by him. I say absolutely, not after his kind, as is usually stated. For the effects of God cannot either exist or be conceived without a cause. Proposition 15 and Proposition 24 Corollary 2. That God cannot properly be styled the remote cause of individual things except for the sake of distinguishing these from what he immediately produces, or rather from what follows from his absolute nature. For, by a remote cause, we understand a cause which is in no way conjoined to the effect. But all things which are, are in God, and so depend on God, that without him they can neither be nor be conceived. Proposition 29. Nothing in the universe is contingent, but all things are conditioned to exist and operate in a particular manner by the necessity of the divine nature. Proof. Whatsoever is, is in God. Proposition 15. But God cannot be called a thing contingent. For by Proposition 11, 
He exists necessarily and not contingently. Further, the modes of the divine nature follow therefrom necessarily and not contingently, Proposition 16, and they thus follow whether we consider the divine nature absolutely or whether we consider it as in any way conditioned to act, Proposition 27. Further, God is not only the cause of these modes insofar as they simply exist, by Proposition 24 Corollary, but also insofar as they are considered as conditioned for operating in a particular manner. Proposition 26. If they be not conditioned by God, Proposition 26, it is impossible, and not contingent, that they should condition themselves. Contrarywise, if they be conditioned by God, it is impossible, and not contingent, that they should render themselves unconditioned. Wherefore, all things are conditioned by the necessity of the divine nature, not only to exist, but also to exist and operate in a particular manner. And there is nothing that is contingent. Quad Eret Demonstrandum Note, before going any further, I wish here to explain what we should understand by nature viewed as active, natura, naturans, and nature viewed as passive, natura, naturata. I say to explain, or rather call attention to it, for I think that, from what has been said, it is sufficiently clear that by nature viewed as active, we should understand that which is in itself and is conceived through itself, or those attributes of substance which express eternal and infinite essence. In other words, Proposition 14, Corollary 1, and Proposition 17, Corollary 2, God, insofar as he is considered as a free cause. By nature viewed as passive, I understand all that which follows from the necessity of the nature of God or of any of the attributes of God, that is, all the modes of the attributes of God, insofar as they are considered as things which are in God and which without God cannot exist or be conceived. Proposition 30. Intellect in function, actu, finite, or in function infinite, must comprehend the attributes of God and the modifications of God, and nothing else. Proof. A true idea must agree with its object, axiom 6. In other words, obviously, that which is contained in the intellect in representation must necessarily be granted in nature. But in nature, by Proposition 14, Corollary 1, there is no substance save God, nor any modifications save those, Proposition 15, which are in God, and cannot without God either be or be conceived. Therefore, the intellect in function finite, or in function infinite, must comprehend the attributes of God and the modifications of God, and nothing else. Quad Eret Demonstrandum End of Section 7 End of Part 1, Propositions 26-30, to 30, Recording by I.M. Clifford